Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where the Bible and critical thinking meet to give you Christian commentary about the things that matter. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an open letter signed by various supposedly pro-life entities in America. One of the most notable signers of the letter was Brent Leatherwood, the current head of the ERLC, which is the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, this is not meant as any kind of hatred towards Brent, not at all, but rather as a humble correction. The letter that was signed said this about women who have their unborn babies killed. Quote, women are victims of abortion and require our compassion and support as well as ready access to counseling and social services in the days, weeks, months, and years following an abortion. As national and state pro-life organizations, let us be clear, we state unequivocally that any measure seeking to criminalize or punish women is not pro-life, and we stand firmly opposed to such efforts, end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, this may sound reasonable at first. It may sound nice and compassionate and Christian and biblical, but it's not Christian at all. Laws are not made based on emotions or feelings. Rather, laws are made according to the moral standards which bind a society. In fact, they ought to come from God's moral standard, his word. The question really comes down to this. Should it be a crime to pay for someone else to kill your kid? Let me ask that question again, because it really is the heart of the issue. Should it be a crime to pay someone else to kill your child? The answer to that question from Scripture and common grace is undoubtedly yes. Let me illustrate that for you today by diving into this letter signed by the head of the ERLC as we compare it to Scripture. The first line of the letter says this, quote, Women are victims of abortion, end quote. Now, taking this statement at face value, without doing any ethical gymnastics or logical gymnastics, the fact is, it is patently false. Biblically, we know that God forms babies in their mother's womb and that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. In Psalm 139, verse 13, David says this, quote, For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together. In my mother's womb, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, end quote. David does not say that he was any less of himself, any less of David in his mother's womb. Rather, he directly states that while it was him as an unborn baby, it was still him nonetheless. And God was the sole creator working all of these things together in the womb. David was a person in the womb. He was no less a person than he was when he was a newborn, or a two-year-old, or a middle-aged man. This is the position of scripture and of the pro-life movement. So given the fact that the baby in the womb is lawfully and morally a person, to kill them unethically qualifies as murder. Leviticus 24.17 says, quote, Whoever takes a human life shall surely be put to death, end quote. Just to be clear, I am not necessarily advocating the death penalty here. That's a topic for another video. And Exodus 20 verse 13 says, quote, you shall not murder, end quote. The unethical taking of a human life, then, is both sin and a criminal act under the law, at least under any kind of law that is truly rooted in God's word. Moving forward from this perspective, the biblical perspective, we can now ask the all-important question, who is the victim of an abortion? Obviously, the only true victim is the child. They are not involved in the act, and their life is the one being taken. They bear no guilt as to the crime, yet they have experienced all of the consequences of the crime. By definition, this means that they are the only true and ultimate victim of this act. The other two people fit under different categories. The one who kills the child actively, the so-called doctor or clinical expert, is guilty of murder directly. The mother is guilty of being an accessory to the murder. In fact, every abortion is, in some sense, paid for by the mother of the child. Either she pays for it directly, or someone else offers to pay for it on her behalf through insurance or other means, and she accepts that offer. Either way, this is effectively a murder-for-hire scheme. So the situation is quite simple. We have an event where one person pays another person to kill an innocent baby. In a case like this, biblically and ethically, who is the victim? Obviously, the child being murdered is the victim. The murderer and the one who pays the murderer and asks them to do it, aiding and abetting them in this infanticide, these two are the victimizers, certainly not the victims. But Brent Leatherwood and so many other mainline pro-lifers will confidently say that these women are the victims of the killing. 
Again, this is plainly false. But some may try to contradict these claims, saying that many women who kill their unborn babies are victims of sexual assault, abuse, and even human trafficking. The letter seems to capitalize on this fact when it says that women, quote, require our compassion and support, as well as ready access to counseling and social services in the days, weeks, months, and years following an abortion, end quote. To this, I would simply respond by saying that with regards to any sinful mistreatment the women have suffered, we should sympathize with them fully, and we should try our very best as Christians to love and support them through our churches in every way we can. John 15, 12 says, quote, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, end quote. The Lord helped us in our sinfulness and even in our distress caused by that sinfulness. Therefore, we should help others even in their sinfulness and their distress. But with all that said, let's stop this sleight of hand trick because none of that has anything to do with the ethics of the decision to pay a doctor to kill your child. Someone may have been abused or sexually assaulted, and that is horrible, but it does not give anyone the right to kill an innocent baby. If someone has been abused greatly, and that factored into their decision to kill their unborn baby, they are to be cared for and sympathized as any victim of abuse should be. However, they are not the victim of the abortion. The child is. The child should receive all of the care and sympathy that comes along with that as well. For example, if someone pays to have their three-year-old child murdered, yet they have been horribly treated and have experienced great trial in their life, we can separate these two things. We can love them and wholeheartedly sympathize with them in every way, as we ought to, while at the same time criminalizing their actions. Again, Exodus 20 verse 13 says, quote, you shall not murder. And there are no exceptions made here for murder if you happen to have had a difficult life. Murder ought to be a criminal act no matter how difficult your life is. Would you like to be murdered by someone who had a hard life? I know I wouldn't. Anything other than this standard, then, is not biblical love and kindness at all. Rather, it is unbiblical injustice and mistreatment of all parties involved. The people who made this document, this letter, seem to have some standard of piety that they think is higher than God's word. The Bible does say that we should seek to pray for and help people practically who've had horrible lives, who are in difficult situations, who have been abused, who have been hurt. Of course we should do that as Christians, but nowhere do the scriptures say that a murderer or the one who pays the murderer is ethically the victim of their crime. Nowhere does scripture say that because you've had a horrible life, and you may have had a horrible one, that you are therefore not morally responsible for any of your actions. This kind of statement, then, this letter, does not come from biblical ethics, but rather from the personal emotions of the writers and signers of the letter. But the letter goes on saying this, quote, As national and state pro-life organizations, let us be clear. We state unequivocally that any measure seeking to criminalize or punish women is not pro-life, and we stand firmly opposed to such efforts, end quote. So here is the ultimate outcome of all of this. It is a natural progression of the original thought. If the women who pay to have their children murdered are victims themselves, then how can we say that they are acting illegally? How can we criminalize their actions if they themselves are apparently the victims of the crime? After all, when a crime is committed, we don't send the victim to jail. We send the perpetrator to jail. And this is the issue here. Once you have labeled these people the victim of the abortion, according to an unbiblical standard, it leads to unbiblical conclusions. In an effort to be compassionate in this letter, the people who have signed it and written it have actually created a standard of compassion that they think is above scripture. The Bible says that those involved in murder are not the victims, but rather the victimizers. We can still give the utmost compassion to all parties involved, but whatever compassion we give them should not take away the legal reality that someone killed a kid and another person paid them to do it. And this should be illegal. 1 John 4.17 says, quote, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. End quote. 
So we know that we should love everyone, and we should not bear sinful grudges against them. We ought to wholeheartedly love the women who kill their unborn babies, knowing all the time that we ourselves have sinned against a holy God. Who are we to withhold love from sinners when we ourselves are forgiven sinners? These women can be forgiven by the blood of Christ, and thank the Lord for that. Let us all pray that they would be. Yet at the very same time, Romans 13.4 says this, quote, But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he, the civil magistrate, does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. End quote. So we are supposed to love and be compassionate towards these women, all of them, across the board. But the same Bible, the same word that commands us to love them and be compassionate also commands the government to legally punish evildoers. And can we seriously say that paying someone to murder one's child is not an act that should be lawfully criminalized to some degree? Of course not. But here we have the head of the Southern Baptist Convention's ERLC signing a letter saying that these actions deserve absolutely no criminalization whatsoever. This is the essence of the issue. The Bible tells us to be loving, but it also tells us how to love. Romans 13.10 says, quote, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. End quote. Contrary to this passage, many modern Christians are falling into the mistake of reading passages that tell us to love others, and then they assume that the Bible gives them the sole right to decide how it is best to fulfill that command. This is absolutely false, and it leads to the unethical conclusions that you've seen in that letter. Just think of how foolish and ridiculous this statement is. They're literally saying something along the lines of, I don't think it should be a crime to pay a doctor to kill a child because God told us to be compassionate to everyone. What a foolish statement to make. If you truly love the unborn child, wouldn't that necessitate that you protect them by making it criminal to kill them? Of course it would. That would be a consistent position. But letters like the one I've read for you today have already bought into the lie that loving the woman involved means that you cannot make it a crime to kill the baby involved. This is secular humanism invading the church. Make no mistake about it. Secular humanism says that man is the measure of all things and that we make the standard as people. This is merely a Christian spin-off of that old falsehood. Yes, God told us to be loving, they might say, but I am the measure of how to love. I get to be my own private subjective standard of God's objective love. I know that God's word said that being directly involved in murder should be illegal and prosecutable by the government, but my standard of love says that we shouldn't do that. And keep in mind, there may be many saved Christians who are saying these things unwittingly. But still, this is merely a different ideation of secular humanism. We can't forget that. In both worldviews here, it all boils down to man's opinion rather than God's word. So let us remember the words of 2 Timothy 3.16, which says, quote, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, end quote. It is scripture and only scripture that is fully perfect, holy, righteous, absolutely true, and breathed out by God himself. We ought to pay attention to it. Our emotions are not greater than the word of God, and they are certainly not a replacement for the ethical standard thereof. And please know this, I do not offer any of this correction from some high and mighty position. I am no better than anyone else. I am nothing but a wretched sinner myself, saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So please, let's pray that the ERLC and the other signers of this document would turn away from this false perspective and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Monique Brown. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. The support starts at just $5 a month, which comes out to just 17 cents a day. Every little bit helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today. And until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.